Well, just a couple weeks ago, uh, I roll out of my bed, look at my alarm clock, and as I turn, there is a cramp that just sears through my body. Mm. And I basically have this pain that will not go away. And I'm sure some of you have experienced this. It lasts not just for a minute or two, but it lasts for days. And just like that, too much rest itself becomes a pain, a quote by Homer. And I find this particularly true because it's not just physical pain that it could cause, it could also cause pain that is internal. It is also a pain that causes uh, negativities in, in the other aspects of your life. So much of our uh, daily lives consists of resting nowadays. We sit when we drive. We sit when we talk to each other. Each other. When we sit when we watch movies. We sit while we do anything, while we learn anything. And it's incorporated into our lifestyle so much that it makes some of us lazy. And this laziness is also a pain. For me, idleness causes anxiety. This is some types of pains that people experience. And uh, the physical pains that we endure are, are sometimes lessons for us that we can learn from. So that next time I would not sleep in a certain direction or whatever it is. But pain, it, it's actually, it actually uh, comes from too much rest, yes, it does become a bit too reliant on it, and sometimes it occurs when, when I'm, right now, I'm having a very painful time trying to convey my message, and it's because of this rest that I have had when I wanted to be prepared more earlier, I wanted to talk about this maybe two, a week ago, but during this time of rest, a week in between the times that I wanted to give this impromptu speech, I started to actually become more anxious, become more idle. I wanted to think about the grand ideas I can maybe say during this minute and a half time that I'm given, but it doesn't work that way. Sometimes it just has to be natural, but I've learned from this, and this time I'm exper experiencing it. For too much rest does become a pain. Too much idleness also becomes a negativity. Thanks. Well, Aaron, I think you probably recognize that you started off pretty well, but you kind of uh, exhausted yourself on the idea, and once you ran out of the first thing that you were talking about, all, all of the, the strength of your presentation starts to crumble in on itself a little bit. You're a little more hesitant, your eye contact drops, uh, you, you, your gestures become less descriptive and involving, and it... it you kind of just feel like the the speech. You're shrinking while you're giving the speech, and I and I I think it's tough because you started off so well. And one of the problems is I think that you've got this 
this quote, and you're, going, you're working at it so literally that you've put yourself down a, a short, blind alley. There's no place to go after a particular point. You need to be a little bit more metaphorical, a little bit more interpretive with the quote, and I don't, I don't see you getting out of that hole as a consequence, the mix metaphor. I don't see you getting out of that dark alley, crawling out of that hole very easily, and as you're doing it, that's where some of the things uh, you know, fall off. You started off, like I said, with good eye contact. As you got more uncertain, it drops down. I thought your voice projected well at the beginning, but toward the end, you just sort of bail out on yourself and your energy level drops down as well. So uh, you can see how it's all the delivery is directly connected with the content issue of the speech. And this is one of those good examples of that when people feel good about what they're talking about, they know where they're going, they have something that they really want to say, they don't have any trouble talking to other people. And then when they get stuck, all of a sudden, all of the good qualities that they had that made them an effective speaker before suddenly start to uh, feel a little bit less certain, a little bit less positive. Yeah, I still think that there were good things in the speech. I like the attention device. I like the descriptive gesture you had at the beginning of the speech. I think your posture was relatively solid for the most part. At the end, you tried to get out of the speech gracefully, and it worked okay. Uh, like I said, I just felt like your delivery it's not so much that you bailed out on the content it's that you bailed out on the delivery it's that when you realized that it wasn't going well it was just like mm, you know and and you could see it happening in front of us and that's a little frustrating for the audience because we want you to succeed all right thank you